Okay, well, my name is Doug Pepe, and I am the proud parent of four Randy students who are sitting there in the audience. I'm, I'm proud to be here, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to talk about blockchain with you. So, the topic of my discussion is Bitcoin and blockchain. Let's have a little show of hands. Who here in the audience has heard of Bitcoin? A lot of people. Who's actually used it? I know you, Mike Abood. I know you've used it. Anyone else? Two, three, four people? Okay, that's very good. This is going to be a non-technical discussion where I'm going to put blockchain into a historical context for you. Now, I'm a lawyer. I studied mathematical math macroeconomics. Um, I'm a Bitcoin miner. I'm not here to talk about the technical aspects of either of those things. I want to talk about the past, present, and future of Bitcoin. So let's start with a little bit of history. Who's this guy? Anyone know? <laughs> this is actually one of the most important historical figures in the financial world that nobody has ever heard of. This guy is Father Luca Pacioli. He was born in 1447, he died in 1517, and he was a friar, a Renaissance man. He was Leonardo da Vinci's math teacher, and a pretty smart guy. But that's not really what made him important. What made him important was that he was the father of modern accounting. So what does an, an accountant from the Renaissance period have to do with blockchain? In 1494, Pacioli systematized the concept of a ledger. Double entry bookkeeping, dry subject. Not many people care about it. Well, it's really important to us because Pacioli's ledgers are everywhere in modern society. And let's give you a little example of this. Meet Marty. <laughs> Marty wants to send a $100 check to his friend, Jennifer, for Jennifer's birthday. That's just a piece of paper. Jennifer takes that piece of paper and deposits it in her bank account. And through a series of entries in a Pacioli ledger, $100 is transferred from Marty to Jennifer. In fact, our entire financial system in the modern world is based upon and is, in fact, only a system of ledgers. Most people don't know this. Money is not something tangible. Money is, in fact, an entry on a ledger. Economists use the phrase M1 to describe the money supply. Well, M1 includes checking account deposits. They're just entries. And your money is an unsecured obligation. It's debt on a bank's balance sheet. It's an entry on a ledger. And that raises a very important question in the post-financial crisis world. Whose ledger do you trust? Do you trust Lehman's ledger? How about Washington Mutual? They failed in 2008. Do you trust their ledger? Wachovia, did you trust their ledger? They were sold because they went bankrupt. Banks fail, they've historically failed, they fail regularly. Do you really trust their ledgers? In October of 2008, right in the midst of the financial crisis, immediately post Lehman, a person came on the scene by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi was the founder of Bitcoin. And who is this person? Well. The funny thing is, nobody knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. It's a pseudonym. But putting aside that we don't know who Satoshi is, what Satoshi did is an economic revolution. And I'll tell you about that economic revolution. It's called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a Pacioli ledger, but it's one that's not based on trust. It is a trustless ledger. Bitcoin, for everything you've heard in the papers, for everything you've read is just a ledger. But unlike Pacioli's ledgers, it requires no trust of any kind. The ledger is called a blockchain. And a blockchain, what it does is it replaces trust with mathematics. You don't have to trust Lehman. You don't have to trust Wachovia. You don't have to trust the Federal Reserve. All you have to trust is a mathematical proof. Satoshi was the first person to make that mathematical proof work. 
Using this trustless ledger, Marty can send Bitcoin, which has value, to Jennifer without trusting anyone. And their transaction, once he sends it, is locked on this blockchain ledger forever, cryptographically. And it's done by a decentralized network of computers called miners. So what does this decentralized, trustless ledger mean for us? I like to call it the blockchain revolution. Close your eyes for a minute and imagine a world where you control your own money, not banks. Where governments cannot eliminate or erode your wealth by printing money backed by debt. A world with no inflation. A world where tin pot dictators in foreign countries don't control the financial lives of their citizens. A world where you can store all of your wealth, every dollar you own, on a phone, on a thumb drive, on a piece of paper, and send it to anyone in the world at any time for almost no cost and almost instantly. Well, guess what? You live in that world. That's what Bitcoin does. So we've talked a little bit about the past. We've talked a little bit about the present. Let's talk a little bit about the future. Blockchain is not limited to finance. It's not limited, uh, limited to banking. Future use cases of blockchain are about as broad as your imagination. Voting systems, patents, chain of title, wills and trusts, big data, cloud storage. Anything that requires a database or a ledger can be put on the blockchain. But the difference is, on the blockchain, you don't have to trust the Facebooks of the world. You don't have to trust the Amazons of the world. You don't have to trust internet service providers. It's done on a trustless basis. And, and the most important for present purposes is computing. Let me tell you a little bit about Ethereum. Ethereum is a decentralized, trustless, global computer. It's a lot of words. But what it does is it puts programs on the blockchain called smart contracts. And those programs run autonomously. They run without anybody controlling them. People are calling this Web 3.0. Now think about that. What can Ethereum do? What can this Web 3.0 do? What can this global decentralized computer that resides everywhere and nowhere do? Well, it's pretty much as broad as your imagination. The possibilities are endless. This is the future. Where we go from here is really up to all of our imagination. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today.